Hi there, Timothy Linsdale, video producer and a Christian, talking about self-doubt today. Hi, my name is Aaron Linsdale. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. Today we're covering part two of our three-part series on tips and tricks on how to overcome self-doubt. So this is our second part in our three-part series on tips and tricks on how to overcome self-doubt and thinking. So this next video I'm going to start off with train your brain to think differently. Now that, I know that sounds a little bit strange, I'm like, oh, what does that mean? But if you begin with constantly thinking with a negative opening, with the, I'm not going to succeed, there's no way this is going to happen, I'm not smart enough, I don't have enough education, enough money, enough people. I absolutely guarantee you that you're not going to get there. Absolutely. So Ford, Henry Ford, had the best quote ever for this. Whether you believe you can succeed or whether you don't believe it, you're absolutely correct. When you... <laughs> yeah, if you believe you can't succeed, what's going to happen? You won't. Yeah, I mean, there's no other thing that's going to happen when you believe you can't succeed. Now, do you want to be self-delusional? No, I'm not going to uh, play Superman, jump off a building, and, oh yeah, I'll be able to fly. Now that's a little bit absurd, but people will wing off and do things unintelligently. You have to make that balance, but if you have this constant negative belief train that keeps churning in your mind and, oh, this isn't going to work, uh, I'm not going to succeed, I'm not a great filmmaker, I can't play the flute well, I'm not good at math, you're going to be bad at everything because you're telling your brain that. Your brain has a differentiating system called the reticular activating system that filters the world. And if you keep telling it these things, it will actually believe that and make those things coming into your life actually happen. We actually are biologically designed that whatever truth we're telling ourselves is what's going to happen. Regardless of what is actually in the real world, it's the strangest thing, but don't program yourself with negativity because it will bring you negative consequences. And that takes a stop making excuses. Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. You've got to move on. Get past that stuff. I can't do this. I can't do that. I shouldn't do this. Why? I'm, you know, don't do that stuff. Yeah. Get on with your project. Get on with your ideas. Press forward. Don't make those excuses. They'll drag you down. You'll pr procrastinate and you won't do them. So don't make those excuses. You're better than you think you are. That's, that's why you're making those excuses. Don't make them. Move forward. No matter what somebody else says, seek your passion. Seek your joy. Seek that I get to do it thing. And enjoy life. Enjoy making things great for you and others. Now that brings us to another point of don't worry about spotlighting yourself. So what does that mean? We all have this belief that we're on parade and 10 million people, 20 million eyeballs are staring at us and judging us and oh my gosh, they're not. Get over it. See, we as humans have this belief that we're on a stage and it's this intrinsic biological system that is a defense system. However, it can be completely self-defeating of, ooh, I don't want to do this. Because honestly, when you're on the street and you're walking by, does anyone care what you're doing? <laughs> no! Unless you have a camera on the street corner and something crazy happens. Don't take this wrong, but no one actually cares what you're doing. So don't get wrapped into, oh, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. No, I'm a motivational speaker. And I'm on stage for maybe an hour, depending on how things are going. And yes, I'm in the spotlight. But once I drop out of there, it, boo, it's gone, it's over. People are on to their next thing. So even if you stumble on the sidewalk, your, your skirt rides up, I don't know, whatever happens to you, don't worry about it. People will talk about it for a minute, and then they'll be done and they'll move on. So don't worry about spotlighting yourself. In fact, things that happen on stage or on camera, many times people don't even know if that's part of the story or not. Move on. Yeah. So pay attention to your thoughts. There's an old saying, 
stinking thinking no. that was used a lot in sales. You start, you start doubting yourself, you start doubting what you're doing, that stinking thinking. You need to be thinking about what it is you get to do. Think about the positive things that can come from this for you, for your family, for helping others. Always moving forward with that idea, being positive. Why can I do this? Why not? Why can I not do this? Yes, I can do this. Move forward with that positive thinking. Yes, this can be done. Yes, we can make this happen. Press on. It's very important. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been guilty of that at workplaces. All of a sudden I get wrapped. Oh, this isn't going to work. That isn't going to work. And whoa, dude, okay, Mr. Negativity. So that brings us into our next point. Replace the phrase, I can't, with I won't. Now, what, what, do, what do we mean by that? When you keep saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, that literally means I can't lift my hand. I can't blink my eyes. You are actually biologically programming yourself to be unable to do something. Instead, if you're going to say, I don't want to do that, I just say, oh, I can't do that, just say, I won't do that. I'm not interested in going and jogging that 10K with you. I'm not interested in reading that book. I'm not interested in watching that movie. That's, that's or whatever you're going to do. But make a definitive statement that it's a personal statement of, I don't want to do that. Not because it's bad, not because it's immoral. Just, eh, I don't want to do that. Because if you say, oh, I can't do that, you actually hobble your ability to succeed and achieve whatever you want to do. I remember there's this story about a, a boy was climbing the mast of a sailboat to his dad, and they were like 30 feet above there. And the dad looked down and he saw his son, like he almost said, hey son, you can't be up here. And the dad realized at that moment, if I tell my son that, he will internalize that can't message and that could literally poison him for the rest of his life because all things bad happen when you're in childhood. <clears throat> and he said, whoa, hey, and said, I, I don't want you up here. You can't be up here. He said, son, since you're up here, why don't you grab the paintbrush and start painting the mast? <laughs> now here's something, another one that's a little strange at first. Beware of your close circle. Oh, yeah. Everybody's got close acquaintances and friends. Now, that beware can be like jealousy. It might not want you to secretly want you to succeed, but there's another side to that coin. They might be afraid you fail, and they don't want to see you hurt or failing. So yeah. if you don't do this adventure, uh, then they have less to worry about you. <laughs> so beware of that close circle, that they're being positive, that they're being supportive, that they're being uplifting to help you succeed. It's always about what it is you can do. Avoid what, you, you know, if you get to worried about what you shouldn't be doing or what you can't do, get down to what it is you can do. That's really important. Yeah. The next trick of overcoming self-doubt and self-doubt speech in your mind is ask yourself what advice you would give to a friend. This is very similar to a point I made in the previous videos. What would you tell yourself in your all oh, great wisdom and oh, I need to give you advice. People love to give advice because we all think we're so freaking smart. We're probably not. This is a form of nostalgia that we like to pass on. But really, it's so easy to see problems when you're not inside of them. When you're inside of a bad relationship, a bad work environment, it's, it's just stupendously simple to keep marching on in the negative environment. When you ask your friends, oh, what do you think about this? Holy cow, thank you for asking me. We'll tell you why this is not working. <laughs> so if you can actually take yourself and say, self, Aaron, what do you really think about this situation? This is the dumbest thing I've done lately. <laughs> and then you realize, oh, maybe I should quit doing it? Yes. Or, Aaron, do you think this will succeed? Dude, go for it. Be awesome. Be your own cheerleader. And if nobody else will, 
At least cheer on yourself, get the pom-pom, scream, kick your legs, do whatever you need to do to make it happen. Be awesome. I like that. Yeah. Change the channel. You know, I know a little <laughs> about that because I'm a video producer. You're sitting watching a program or the same uh, channel, mm -hmm. and you're, it's getting you down. It's wearing you out. Change the channel. Move on to something else. Improve yourself. If you're hanging with the, maybe even the wrong people could drag you down. Change that channel. Move on to things that are positive, things you get to do, things you enjoy, be awesome. Move forward. Sometimes you just need to change the channel. Yep. And that brings us to our next point. Stop confusing honesty for truth. Now, I remember coming across that one like, ooh, that's pretty deep. <laughs> because, well, what's honesty and what's truth? Okay, so uh, you may have heard this phrase, well, this is my truth. No, no, it's not. I believe my truth is my hair is light, golden, blonde. That's, that's not true. You're, you're, you're trying to be honest with yourself. Don't get wrapped up into that new thinking that seems to have come along. Oh, this is my truth. There's not my truth. There only is the truth the reality. The atmosphere has 20% of oxygen. Reality, fact. Well, my truth is it's complete oxygen because that's the way I think and that's how I breathe. Now that sounds like complete bogus garbage, but that's how a lot of people are talking now and it's completely junk. So you need to be honest with yourself, but don't ignore the reality of what is actually happening, the real truth of the situation. Honesty is the best policy. Yeah. Now, we've come to celebrate your quirks. <laughs> Everybody yeah. has them. They do something. They do it all the time. But celebrate them. That's what makes you an individual. That's yeah. what makes you special. Of course, in life, there are things that are negative you need to improve on. Maybe you need to quit them. But you want to... those. You want to look at those quirks closely. How do they benefit me? How do they benefit others? Their strengths and weaknesses. You're working on those weaknesses. You're perfecting the strengths so that you can help you, your, yourself, your family, and others move forward. So think about those quirks as a fun thing for you that makes you as an individual, makes you special, and enjoy them. And press forward with great life. And there's an interesting quote from an NBA player I knew of the Utah Jazz. He said, the thing that makes you uncomfortable about yourself may be your greatest strength. <laughs> that one was really good. Mark Eaton, boy, that guy's great. So my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. And I'm Timothy Linsdow, a video producer and a Christian. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe on our video. And also, please support us on Venmo, PayPal, and Patreon. Thank you very much for watching. And get out there and make it a great day.